Here's another question that was sent to me. The individual wanted to know how they could install shear panel or exterior plywood sheathing for a building with two by four floor joists as uh, shown in the example here. And I could see where it could get a little tricky, especially with some of these two by four joists uh, being 24 inches tall. Now the ones in the picture here are 16 inches tall. So um, it'll probably work with that. Um, but once you get into larger ones, uh, you might have to do a little more um, adapting or at least use one of the methods here. But uh, this method here is going to be using eight foot pieces of shear panel. So each one is four foot by eight foot and you can see where they're staggered. So the eight foot panel here is going to go up to the top plate. You're going to have um, this board is going to be a little smaller because most of the time the engineers want at least a two foot minimum piece. So you're probably going to have to cut um, for this one. At least you'd have to cut it a little smaller. If you had 24 inch joists, you might not be able to or you might be able to use a full eight foot sheet, eight foot sheet and then a piece two foot or a little bit larger. And of course, this is staggering four foot off of the center for the next piece. And of course, this is these pieces right here are the ones that really, in my opinion, hold the floors together because they're connecting the two walls um, and kind of really sandwiching everything in. This one right here is the top plate might not be as effective when it comes to pressure um, ripping this thing uh, apart. So let's go ahead and get rid of this panel here, this section. Remove a couple of pieces. You are going to need to block the edges or the perimeter of the shear panel for nailing. And you might not need to do this if it's just exterior plywood uh, sheathing also, but uh, why not block it? Because this could buckle. I mean, I say you might not have to because then when you're just doing exterior sheathing, you can actually turn the plywood and how we're running them all vertical panels this way you can actually run them horizontal if that's the case so the blocks two by fours these can be larger they can be two by threes or uh, or even um, four by fours if you're looking for some more strength and don't forget that some nailing if you i believe it's anything under four Inches on center does require a larger block. Now you'd have to check with your engineer on that. Another view of it here, the blocks, and then how this is assembled. We can see here where the piece is breaking on the top plate. Another view of it there. I went ahead and put some blocks in here. You would need something. I don't think you could just nail to these... Um, to the two by fours and the joists themselves, but you might be able to. I'm, and, and keep in mind, again, these are just examples. Your engineer could verify all of this information for you. Give you a better view of it there. I would just kind of line them up 16 inches on center. And here we can see where the plywood is half on the plate, the top framing plate, which is nice. And then the bottom blocks here, bottom of the sheathing, go ahead and pan away. So this is one example, all eight foot sheets of plywood in this example. In this example here, we're going to use 10 foot sheets and eight foot sheets. So this would be a 10 foot sheet. And then this would be a 10 foot sheet of plywood. And you check, need to check with your local um, lumberyard for what type of sizes they would carry. If all they have is eight foot sheets of plywood, you're going to have to go back to the first method. But 10 foot sheets could save you a little bit of time or even create a stronger project, um, create more structural strength for you. I would imagine the less amount of breaks, the fewer breaks, the better, stronger this is going to be. So 10 foot piece here. And then this right here is probably going to be better for you to use a 10 foot piece. Otherwise, you're going to have too much waste, but you'd need to figure that out on your own. So we've got eight footer, eight footer, eight footer, eight footer, 
and then of course 10, 10, and then these would be a two pieces that would be cut out of a 10 foot sheet. Hope that makes sense. Go ahead and whip through this, same kind of blocking. We can see the blocking here, and then of course the top of the 10 foot sheet is now connecting to the lower framing plate of the upper wall. And I like that. Again, it's creating a little more strength for us. Another view of it there. Again, you got to block the edges. So even if you didn't have to, your engineer said, hey, you don't have to block uh, 16 inches on center. You're still going to have to block the edges. But I like this design over the other one because now I'm tying the two plates together. So before we would have had the break down here. This one now we're going to have the break up here. So it's tying this, this wall actually to this wall. Nice connection. Bottom of it. And then that is the blocking again. Now let's take a look at the other wall. We're going to use 10 foot piece of panel here and the rest of this will be eight foot. Take a look at the opening. Remove one of the pieces of shear panel. See where everything is nice perimeter nailing there. Blocking again. Another view of it there. And remember the brakes on this are actually going to be on the edge of the panel. So this means you'd have to lay your joist out accordingly, but that's not always going to work out. We can see here where the bottom of this upper piece of panel is connecting to the lower plate. Same with the bottom piece of panel here. So that makes a nice connection. Now what if your joists don't line up? You might need to install some type of blocks. Uh, three by four. I believe I said a two by three in the other earlier in the video. I'll correct that. But this is a three by four, two by four. And of course, if you if you got to run something horizontal, you might need to. If you got some larger joists, this might be an approved method. This is actually something that I've never seen done. I just kind of threw it out there. You could check with your engineer to see if this would be approved. But I've seen this done here before where they have uh, breaks in between or um, blocks in between the joists like this that would line up and create so you could nail the perimeter nailing for the shear panel. But anyway, that is it for this video and I hope it helps.